Grace Coolidge, the scandalous side of a first lady. Grace Coolidge, remembered as the poised and charming first lady of the 1920s, harbored a life filled with intrigue beyond the public gaze. Behind her role as Calvin Coolidge's wife lay a trove of bold, unconventional, and lesser-known stories. This video reveals 10 striking and scandalous facts about Grace Coolidge, offering a glimpse into the hidden facets of one of America's most enigmatic first ladies. Fact number 1. A teacher for the deaf. Before becoming the first lady, Grace Coolidge carved out a significant career in education, specifically focusing on teaching deaf students. Born on January 3, 1879, in Burlington, Vermont, she pursued a degree in teaching at the University of Vermont, graduating in 1902. Following her graduation, Grace dedicated herself to teaching at the Clark School for the Deaf in Northampton, Massachusetts. Her work at Clark School, beginning around 1904, was more than just a job, it was a demonstration of her deep commitment to supporting and empowering deaf students. Her dedication to this cause was driven by a profound belief in the potential of every child, regardless of their abilities. Grace's experience as a teacher for the deaf didn't just shape her professional life, it also informed her later advocacy efforts in the White House for people with disabilities. Number 2 early romance and a brush with destiny. Before her storied marriage to Calvin Coolidge, Grace Coolidge had a significant romantic involvement with a man named Frank Joyner. Her relationship with Joyner was quite serious, and they were close to marriage, a path that would have led her life in a completely different direction. This early romance is a lesser-known chapter of her life, overshadowed by her later prominence as First Lady. Moreover, the first encounter between Grace and Calvin Coolidge was as unusual as it was fateful. Legend has it that Grace first saw Calvin through a window while he was in his undershirt, shaving. This candid and somewhat humorous beginning to their relationship was far from the formal courtships typical of the era. Despite the initial awkwardness of their first meeting, there was an undeniable connection that eventually led to their marriage. This chance encounter marked the beginning of a partnership that would later ascend to the heights of American political life. Number 3. A White House Wedding. The White House, under the Coolidges, was the scene of a significant social event in 1926 when Grace and Calvin Coolidge's son, John, married Florence Trumbull. The wedding, held on May 15, 1926, was a grand affair that captured the nation's attention. Florence Trumbull was the daughter of the then-governor of Connecticut, John H. Trumbull, adding a political dimension to the union. This wedding was one of the most high-profile events during Coolidge's presidency, showcasing the personal lives of the first family. The event was noted for its elegance and was a talking point in the media, reflecting the public's fascination with the private lives of political figures. This wedding not only celebrated the union of two prominent families but also highlighted the role of the White House as a venue for significant national events beyond political functions. Number 4. Fashion Icon of the Roaring Twenties As First Lady in the 1920s, Grace Coolidge became a celebrated fashion icon, known for her elegant flapper dresses and love of vibrant colors, especially red. Her wardrobe, frequently highlighted in media, included striking, elaborate hats and bold statement outfits that added glamour to the White House. Her fashion choices, embodying the Roaring Twenties' exuberant spirit, made her a trendsetter featured in numerous magazines and newspapers. Grace's style was symbolic of the era's modernity and evolving women's roles, influencing fashion trends nationwide. Number 5. Advocate for Health and Disability Issues as First Lady, Grace Coolidge used her platform to advocate for health and disability issues, a testament to her progressive outlook on public welfare. She was particularly active in raising awareness about tuberculosis, a major public health concern in the early 20th century. Her involvement in tuberculosis awareness campaigns brought much-needed attention to the disease and its impact on communities. Moreover, Grace's dedication to the cause of the deaf, stemming from her earlier career as a teacher for the deaf at the Clark School for the Deaf in Northampton, Massachusetts, continued during her time in the White House. She supported various initiatives and programs aimed at improving education and resources for the deaf. Her advocacy in these areas was significant, as it highlighted the needs of marginalized groups and contributed to advancing public understanding and support for health and disability issues. 
Number 6. The Grace Coolidge Photo Scandal. In 1924, a photograph of Grace Coolidge wearing a sleeveless gown with bare shoulders sparked a national controversy. Captured during a White House event, the image was seen as daring, diverging from the modest fashion standards of the time. This departure from conservative attire led to widespread debate, with opinions divided between admiration for her modern style and criticism for perceived impropriety for a first lady. The incident underscored the changing cultural norms of the 1920s, placing Grace at the forefront of evolving fashion and femininity ideals. Her attire choice in the photograph became emblematic of a shift towards more liberal fashion for women. Number 7. The White House Menagerie. The Coolidge's transformed the White House into a home for a diverse and unusual collection of pets, reflecting Grace Coolidge's deep affection for animals. Their menagerie included several dogs of different breeds, with the most famous being Rob Roy, a white collie, often photographed with the First Lady. In addition to dogs, they also had birds, but the most unconventional pet was a raccoon named Rebecca. Initially sent to the White House to be part of a Thanksgiving meal, Rebecca was spared and became a beloved pet, often seen being walked on a leash by the First Lady. The presence of these animals in the White House was more than just a personal preference, it humanized the Coolidges and made them relatable to the American public. The menagerie added a layer of warmth and whimsy to the White House, endearing Grace and her family to the nation. Number 8. The Lighter Side of Politics Grace Coolidge brought a unique sense of humor and lightheartedness to the White House, contrasting with President Calvin Coolidge's serious demeanor. Her effervescent personality shone through at social events and public appearances, where she was known for her wit and charm. In the 1920s, a time of considerable political and social change, Grace's vivacity added a sense of balance and approachability to the presidential residence. She redefined the traditional role of the First Lady, bringing joy and spontaneity that resonated with the public and offset the typically sullen political atmosphere. Number 9. A Mother's Grief One of the most challenging periods in Grace Coolidge's life came in 1924, following the sudden death of her younger son, Calvin Coolidge Jr., at just 16 years old. He passed away on July 7, 1924, due to blood poisoning resulting from a blister he got while playing tennis on the White House grounds. This tragic event deeply affected the Coolidge family, with President Coolidge himself noting in his autobiography that the power and glory of the presidency went with him. Grace's resilience in the face of such a devastating loss was remarkable. She managed to maintain her public duties while coping with her personal grief, displaying immense strength and fortitude. Her ability to handle this personal tragedy with such grace and composure was widely admired and sympathized with by the American public, adding a very human dimension to the first family's public image. Number 10. Life After the White House after Calvin Coolidge's presidency ended in 1929, Grace Coolidge remained actively involved in public service and advocacy. She continued her work with various charitable organizations, focusing on health, education, and animal welfare. Her efforts were particularly notable with the Clark School for the Deaf and the American Foundation for the Blind. Grace frequently engaged in fundraising and public awareness campaigns, underscoring her lasting dedication to these causes. Her post-White House years were not only a continuation of her previous work but an expansion of her commitment to positively impacting the community.